In this video, I'm going to cover a very interesting example which is based on the simplex method. But that's not the usual simplex method where we have been given a linear programming problem and we have been asked to solve that linear programming problem using simplex method. So let's look at the question, what the question is. In this problem, two consecutive simplex table of a linear programming problem are given to us. And we don't have any other information. The original LPP is not with us. We only have this two consecutive simplex table. So let us see that this is table 1 and this is table 2. So from just information of having that these two are consecutive, I need to find the missing entries A to K. So let us look at the table and let's see what information we can use currently. Since these two are consecutive and here I can see that these two are basic variables. Of course, this is in the basic variable columns. So from there, we need to extract the information to find the missing entry. So let's start looking at the solution for this problem. So in solution, we see that from table 1 and 2, the entering variable is x1 because x1 is appearing in the next table instead of x4 and x4 is the leaving variable. So this is the first information that we can trace from these two consecutive simplex table. Since x1 is appearing in the table and x4 is appear, uh, leaving the table, so here we can say that b is the pivot element or this will become the pivot row. So which is the row which correspond to x4 is becoming the pivot row. So now in the next table, what I want instead of this b, so here at g, this value should be 1. So this g will become 1 because now x1 is in the basic variable set and h has to be 0 and the zj minus cj corresponding to this has to be 0 which is already 0 currently given in this table. So now let's start extracting based on this information. Entering variable is x1 and leaving variable is x4. So I'm reconstructing this table and filling out these some of the entries. Also noted down that if x4 is appearing in the basis, so the corresponding this position has to be 1. So this i is 1. And similarly, we can say that x1 is in the basis, so g has to be 1 and h has to be 0. So with this information, let's construct this table again. So now corresponding to x4, I am putting 1 here and here also instead of g, this is 1 and h, this value is 0. So we can keep on writing i is 1, g is 1 and h is also 0. So these three uh, uh, variables value, we immediately know these three missing entries. Now let's look at the again, since we have identified that x1 is is the entering variable and x4 is the leaving variable so here we have identified that b this is the leading element or this is the pivot element so now since this is the pivot element so we can apply the row operation considering this in mind and if i consider this one as r1 row this is r2 and this is r3 row so in the next table i should have then applied the row operation to get the next table and since R2 is the pivot row, so R2 should go with R2 by B. That is the pivot element. And R3, as you can see in the position of R3, we got a minus 1. So this minus 1, I need to make it to 0 in the next table, which is this one. So R3 goes to, since we have minus 1, so I'm adding a plus 1 with the help of the pivot row, that is R2 by B. And similarly, I change R1. R1, uh, we can see that we have A here. So I will keep R1 minus A with the help of pivot R2 by B. So these are the row operation. Since this was the particular column which is the deciding uh, one for the row operation because here are the scalars and the ZJ minus CJ that I want to make it as 0, 1, 0. So comparing the first row entry and the second row entry and we know the row operation. So what we can see is that with the row operation if we have applied the row on the first table we should get this as the output. So by comparing this. The first, if I compare this B by this one, so what is this? B by B, this should be equal to 1. So this is the operation we are looking. R2 goes to R2 by B. So you pick up the previous R2 and you get the next R2. So if this is the previous R2, that is B, by B this is 1. Now look at the previous R2, that is C by B, because the operation is R2 by B. C by B in the output, we are getting it as 2 by 3. And then pick up the D by b that is b. this denominator b is coming up due to the uh, row operation and we get the next result that is 2 by r2 so here in this case again this is 2 by 3 and then i have 1 by b this is equal to 1 by 3 and then here we got 0 by b and this is 0 which is correct and both are uh, entries we are not supposed to find anything 6 by 
the lastly 6 by b is equal to f now from here you can calculate what is b b is 3 once we know what is b we can calculate d so d is 2 and c is 2 and this is true 1 is equal to 1 there is nothing to find but in the last case when b is 3 so f is 2 so we found some more entries c d b f and we write them here b c d and the f so we can see that there are some more entries that we have found and now let's look again which entries are still missing we have a e j k which are still missing and for this what was the row operation that i have written so let's look back to the row operation r1 is r1 minus a times r2 by b so this is the row operation for the first row so let's bring back here so this is r1 goes to r1 minus a times r2 by b this was the row operation that i need to right so this is r1 and this is my next output corresponding to r1 so if i look uh, this operation again because now i know what is b so this is a times r2 by 3 and so let's look at this operation and this is my new one so looking at the previous values and the next value let's look at the operation and comparing the same way output is the previous output is a which is r1 and the next is my 0 that we see here the next r1 is 0 minus a times r2 r2 is currently 3 3 by 3 so this is a minus a which is 0 and on the left hand side also we have 0 so which is fine now let's compare the next entry so in the next entry as we see that we got r1 as minus 1 and the output is minus 4 so let's write output on the left hand side and the previous r1 is minus 1 so in case you get a confusion you may keep this as r hat as a new uh, r1 hat and this is the new entries that we have found okay so minus 1 minus a times r2 r2 we have to take the previous one so this is 2 by 3 so we got minus 4 which is equal to minus 1 minus 2 times a by 3 take this minus 1 on the other side so we have this as minus 3 minus 2 a by 3 and so we cross multiply we got minus 9 equal to minus 2 a and we got a is equal to 9 by 2 so we got the value for a as well that it's 9 by 2 now let's keep on comparing so we have 3 and then we got j so the output is j and the previous entry r1 is 3 minus a times and the corresponding r2 which is 2 so this is 2 by 3 so here i get 3 minus a into 2 by 3 so once i know what is a in the previous step i can substitute here so this gives me 9 by 2 into 2 by 3 and so i get 3 minus uh, this 2 and 2 get cancelled and here we got 3 so j is 0 so we got j is equal to 0 and lastly i also want to look at the last position 0 and k so the output we can see that this output is k and r1 is a 0 minus a times r2 which is 1 so this is 1 by 3 and so k is equal to uh, minus a so minus a is this is minus 9 by 2 and then you got 1 by 3 so we got uh, this as minus 3 by 2 so k is equal to minus 3 by 2 so now let's substitute these entries and look at if there is any entry still missing in the table so now substituting a j k and the previous value we have seen that all are uh, available now in the table except this value e and to find out this e we have to again look back to the operation third operation because this is in the third row so if i again go back to my third row operation what was my third row operation let's go back this is the third row operation r3 plus r2 by b so let's bring back this row operation here to calculate this value so r3 goes to r3 plus r2 by b this was the row operation and here this is of course the new r3 that we are going to look at from the second table and this one is for the previous table so this is r3 plus r2 and b we know that is 3 so now again in the similar way as we have compared the third row let's look since all the entries are already available we just need to focus on to these two entries so here we can see that r3 the previous r3 is e plus r2 by 3 so r2 is 2 by 3 and this is stored into the next value which is minus 1 by 3 so that is the output so from here we can get e is equal to minus 1 by 3 minus 2 by 3 and so this value is minus 3 by 3 which is equal to minus 1 so e is equal to minus 1 so in fact all these entries which were missing 
we have calculated using the row operations so apply one by one these row operation carefully because we know the previous uh, row also and we know the output also so some of the entries are missing in previous and some are missing in out so then comparing these to our uh, initial and the next output we can find the missing entries and so we have found all the missing entry that completes our question